The UK revises down economic growth, but signs of strength remain. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Ramzan Karmali. GDP grew by 0.5% in the second quarter, revised down from 0.6%. But there were positive signs from household finances and business investment. So what does this mean for not just policymakers at the Bank of England, but the UK's Finance Minister, Rachel Reeves, as she prepares next month's budget? Well, to help answer that and more, I'm joined by Jane Foley, Head of FX Strategy at Rabobank. Jane, thanks so much for joining us. So how big a deal is it that GDP was revised lower? After all, you know, the Bank of England themselves are already forecasting it to grow even more slowly in the third quarter. Well, exactly. The Bank of England was, uh, has already forecast a lower growth rate. We've already had some forward-looking data, of course, for the third quarter as well. And so, uh, in many respects, it wasn't a surprise. But that doesn't mean to say uh, it wasn't a disappointment, particularly for the Prime Minister and his Chancellor. Now, uh, the, the ONS, the Office of National Statistics, also told us that there was no growth in July. And, of course, that gives us a taste of what we might see in the third quarter GDP data, somewhat lower, I would say, than the the numbers that we saw for the second quarter. Now, the foreign exchange market seemed to take the data in their stride, though, and the pound still remains around that 134 level against the US dollar. What do you think is behind the recent sterling strength? Well, a large part of it is to do with, of course, uh, the Bank of England. Uh, Even though growth is expected to falter into the third quarter, uh, the Bank of England has made it very clear that services sector inflation is still too high and it is still around 5.6%. So uh, although the labour market is showing signs of of loosening, uh, what we've seen so far is only consistent with the Bank of England cutting interest rates, perhaps quarterly. So another move may be in in November. And that, of course, contrasts with what we've seen from the Federal Reserve having cut interest rates by 50 basis points. And of course, is also expected expectations mounting that the European Central Bank may bring forward some of their easing too. So uh, the the very steady uh, guidance provided by the Bank of England is is providing some stability for the pound. And UK house prices, according to Nationwide, were higher in September as well. Uh, The annual rate of 3.2% is actually its fastest pace since November 2022. And the Bank of England also said that British lenders in August approved just under 65,000 mortgages. Uh, That's the most since August 2022, which was just before that Liz Trust mini budget. So is this all down to expectations that the Bank of England will start cutting rates further? I think that's certainly a large part of it. Now, of course, real incomes in the UK have already started to improve too, as inflation has fallen lower. So that is part of the story. Uh, Real incomes improving, people feeling that they've got a bit more money uh, in their pocket. But certainly, uh, mortgage rates have come down quite significantly. And in fact, around about 1% on a fixed uh, five-year mortgage rate relative to uh, last year, about a year ago. Uh, We've also seen two-year deals come down too. And in fact, uh, one of the high street lenders now saying that it will lend money up to six times the borrower's salary. So again, the scope for some competition out there between the the, the lenders. So that is all good news if people are looking to move house. And it's not long now until Rachel Reeves' first budget. How do you think she'll weigh up all the data that she's seen today and in the past sort of few weeks? Well, I think we all know that she's got a very difficult path to tread in this budget. She definitely wants to encourage investment in the UK. She knows that if the government is to stand any chance of meeting the fairly lofty growth targets for the UK, there needs to be investment. There needs to be an increase in in productivity too. But of course, we all know that the government are very strapped. They've got 100% of GDP debt in the UK. That means there's very limited room uh, for spending. So I think one of the questions that we're looking at now is whether or not she's going to change the fiscal targets or indeed whether or not she's going to change the definition of debt in order to give herself more wiggle room. There's a lot of speculation though isn't there about tax rises. Uh, Are we almost certain to see taxes going up? We've certainly been warned, yes, that we will get tax rises. But of course, the Labour government said that they wouldn't raise taxes directly on workers. So we also know that we won't see uh, income tax rises uh, 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 from this budget, at least. And now that means that that the focus is switching to uh, capital gains tax. That certainly uh, uh, seems to be in the government sites or maybe uh, an increase in employers' national insurance contributions. That's another one that's been touted. But of course, um, the, the capital gains tax increase, if it comes, would be something which would go against what the government is trying to do in in raising investor confidence. So once again, a very difficult line to tread. Jane Foley from Rubber Bank, many thanks for your thoughts. 
And that's Market Insight. Don't forget you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.